Bonjour à tous, hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 4, Leçon J. And in this lesson, we'll discover together how to conjugate at the present form le verbe venir. So, venir means to come. Okay, so it's quite useful and especially it does belong to the third group of verbs so it's not regular so for the present form it's quite useful to spend few minutes just to see the conjugation together okay so we'll we'll start right now first form je viens final s not pronounced je viens remember i e n yen yen je viens okay tu Vien, final S not pronounced. Tu viens. Okay, then il, elle, vient. Final T not pronounced. Il, elle, vient. Okay, so je viens, tu viens, il, elle, vient. Phonetically, it's the same form. Okay, but then for nous, it will be a bit different. O, N, S, remember, classic ending for nous at the present form. Final S not pronounced, so you will get the sound venons, nous venons, nous venons, okay? Then, classic ending for vous, a Z here, and then you pronounce it E, vous venez, vous venez, okay? And the last one here, so you've got this double N just after the E, so it will change a little bit your pronunciation, you will have to pronounce this E uh, like E, E, okay? Il vient, so remember this classic ending E, uh, N, T for the third person of the plural is here, but phonetically doesn't exist, so you don't pronounce it. Vien, vien, okay? Il vien, elle vien. All right, so let's see the form one more time. Je viens. Tu viens. Il vient. Elle vient. Nous venons. Vous venez. Ils viennent. Elles viennent. All right. So, venir is quite important. Be sure to remember it by heart. Please, 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 s'il vous plaît. Uh, and then, when you're ready, you can go at the following address to find the next lesson, okay? And then more material here, imagie.net. Have a great day. Au revoir. Les pronoms C-O-D. Okay, so no stress, but still, it will be quite important. Okay, les pronoms C-O-D. So we'll take first a sentence, okay? So it's a question, and it's Tu regardes la Television. Okay, so tu regardes, regardez is to watch, la television. So if we look at this question, okay, and then we want to define all the elements, the first thing that we've got in this sentence is tu. Okay, so it's here and it's sujet, so the subject of the sentence here. Okay, second part that we've got here is regarde. Okay, regarde here, and it's the verb, okay, that you've been conjugating, it's a s just because it's tu, all right? And the second part, or the, sorry, the, so the third part here, so the la last part, la télévision. So la télévision, that's what we will call complément, okay, because it's complement, it will complete the sentence here by giving some information. It's objet, it doesn't have anything to do because it's uh, la télévision, okay? So it's not an object like that, but it's what we call grammatical object, okay? And we say that it's direct because you don't have any preposition between the verb and this complement, okay? So no preposition, so it's direct, okay? So... Why do we say that it's quite important to use les pronoms COD? Just because when you've got a question, so if someone is asking you, tu regardes la télévision, okay? 
the first option would be oui je regarde la télévision so of course it's possible to repeat i mean this part la télévision okay but then if we are honest then in most of the cases we won't repeat la télévision in that case we will use what we call pronounce okay just to avoid repeating this word okay so let's see these pronouns together so as usual we will have the difference between the masculine the feminine and the plural okay in that case here we'll start with the masculin singulier masculin singulier will be first le or then as usual if we've got a vowel coming after the e will disappear so it will be l apostrophe okay le or then l like that okay if it's feminine and at the singular form so we're talking here about the third person of the singular it will be la or for the same reasons as previously L apostrophe if you get a vowel after okay and then for the plural form so here we're talking about the third person of the plural then it will be les okay so let's repeat them one more time so for the masculine singular form it's le for the feminine singular form it's la okay and then if they are followed by vowels then you take a and are away and then you get this l okay and for the plural form here it's les all right so let's see that in action now so if you get the same question tu regardes la télévision all right so now we've got all the elements so we know that tu was the subject regarde the verb la télévision complément d'objet direct and that's the thing we want to replace we don't want to repeat la télévision okay so first what do we need to do is first to spot the gender of the word we know that la télévision is feminine okay so we've got all the keys necessary oui je la regard so as i said a long time ago in the lesson remember that in french the pronouns like this one for instance are coming before the verb so that's the reason why you will have this la here before the verb oui je la regarde okay Let's take another question. And here you get tu vas regarder la télévision. So what's the difference between the previous question and this question? Well, this is and we saw that in a previous lesson. Uh, I guess it was on this unit so you can check it if you're not sure about that. That's what we call the futur proche, so the near future. Tu vas regarder la télévision. You are going to watch Okay, so that's the near future. Tu vas regarder la télévision. Okay. And then here, if you look carefully, well, you've got two verbs. And that's the important thing here. So if you will have a structure with two verbs, and then you want to use a pronoun, this pronoun will come always before the second verb like here oui je vais la regarder okay so i'm not telling you that it will come between the two verbs because you can have many things between these verbs okay so focus on this idea that it will come before the second verb oui je vais la regarder Okay. So we'll see that les pronoms complément d'objet direct can replace all 
the persons. So for the first person it will be m, second person it will be t, third person of the singular, so the one we saw le for the masculine form and then la for the feminine form, first person of the plural nous, so basically it's quite easy to memorize this one to remember it. Same thing here. Second person of the plural, vous. And then third person of the plural, les. Alright, so me, te, le, la, nous, vous, les. Alright? So we'll see now a few examples. So the first one. Il me regarde. So if you want to say that he is looking at me, il me regarde. Okay? So remember, as I said previously, these pronouns are coming before the verb. Okay? Il me regarde. Present form, only one verb, you just put it before. Il me regarde. Il te regarde. So he's looking at you. Il te regarde. Il le regarde. Il la regarde. He's looking at him. He's looking at her. Il nous regarde. Il vous regarde. Il les regarde. Okay? It's not that difficult when you, when you try to remember, well, first, of course, the, the pronouns, and then this idea that it will come before the verb. Well, honestly, it's not that tricky. Okay? Uh, I've been putting the same sentence, but then at this near future form. Okay? So just to show you, if you forgot it, that it should come before the second verb. Okay? So, il va me Regarder. So he's going to watch me, hein, or to look at me. Okay. Il va me regarder. Il va te regarder. Il va le regarder. Il va la regarder. Il va nous regarder. Il va vous regarder. Il va les regarder. Les pronoms C-O-I. Okay, les pronoms C-O-I. So, uh, well, let's say that it's the second part of uh, les pronoms C-O, complément d'objet. Okay, so if you didn't watch the previous lesson, uh, well, maybe it would, be, it would be better to to do so, so that you could understand maybe more clearly the, 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 the whole thing. Okay, but then still we're starting right now. So, les pronoms complément d'objet direct. So, we'll start with a, une question, a question. Okay, so we'll see. It's a basic question. Okay, you get, tu parles à ton frère. Okay, parler is to talk. Tu parles, you talk, to your brother, à ton frère. Okay, so if we have a look at the elements in this sentence, the first part, or the first element is tu, okay, and that's the subject of the sentence, tu, all right, then the second element is parle, okay, and that's the, the verb, so it's ending like that because you've been conjugating this verb according to tu, okay, but it's a verb here, and then we've got this last part here, à ton frère, so that's what we call complément, so it will come to complete the sentence, okay, and it's objet, okay, so be careful, it's really what we call a grammatical object, so it's not an object, because in that case, it's a good example, because it's a person, okay, but then it's a grammatical object, and it's indirect, because you've got this preposition a here, okay, so in the previous les uh, lesson, we saw the direct ones, okay, there were without any preposition, okay, but then in this lesson it's indirect because you've got the preposition a here, okay, and it will change the things. 
So let's see the question. You can ask the question. So it's the same. Tu parles à ton frère? Okay. And then the answer that you could give, of course, would be oui, je parle à mon frère. But let's say that in most of the cases in French, we won't repeat this à mon frère part. Okay. We'd rather use pronouns just to avoid repeating this complément d'objet indirect. Okay. So we'll see how they go. As usual in French, we will have the difference between the masculine form, the feminine form, and the plural form. Okay. And here, just to start, we'll start with masculine singular. Okay. Masculine singular form will be lui. Okay. Ui, lui, lui. All right. Féminin singulier, so feminine form and the singular form here, it will be lui. <clears throat> so it's quite easy to memorize, to remember, okay, because it is the same form for the masculine and the feminine form. Okay, and then for the plural form, so third person of the plural, to be more precise, it will be leur. Okay, so masculine singular, third person of the singular, lui. Féminin singulier, feminine singular form, third person of the singular, lui, and then the plural form, third person of the plural, leur. Okay? Let's see now the same question. Okay? Tu parles à ton frère. Okay? And the idea in that case, of course, is to avoid repeating this part here, so complément d'objet indirect, and to replace it with the pronoun okay so first we know that it's indirect because we've got the preposition here we know here that it's masculine because it's brother okay and then we've got the information here because it's ton all right so we've got all the elements just to reply using the pronoun oui je lui parle okay so the only thing you should really um, think about here is the position. So you should remember, as I said previously, that the pronouns in French will be placed before the verb. So, je lui parle. Oui, je lui parle. All right? And then we could have, well, basically the same question, but then this question would be like it is here at the near future so if you didn't see the lesson regarding the, the near future uh, maybe it would be uh, more useful for you to, to watch it but still the near future it's a way to construct the future but at the present tense with the, the verb aller to go you are going to speak or talk okay to your brother Okay, so you are going to, but then the, the important thing in that thing in that case is that you've got two verbs. Okay, you've got aller here to go, and then you've got parler to speak or to talk. Okay, and when you've got two verbs, then for the pronoun that you would like to use, you will have to put it just before the second verb. Oui, je vais lui. Parler. Okay, so I'm not telling you that uh, it should be between because that's the case here, but then between these two verbs, you could put many, many things, okay, like adverbs or other things, okay, so remember that this pronoun lui should be before the second verb, all right? So now we'll see these pronouns, but then for all the persons. Okay, for the first person of the singular, it will be me. Second person of the singular, te. Then third person, like we saw, so masculine and feminine, I only put one. So lui, because it's the same. First person of the plural, nous. Second person of the plural, vous. Third person of the plural, leur. Okay, me. 
te, lui, nous, vous, leur. All right? So let's see examples now. So he's talking to me. Il me parle. Okay, remember, me, and then before the verb, il me parle. He's talking to you. Il te parle. Il lui parle. I don't know why lui is still white. <laughs> well, maybe it was a mistake for my... Yeah, it is a mistake. It should be, it should be orange, but then still. Il lui parle. Okay. Il nous parle. Il vous parle. Parle, il leur parle. All right? Il me parle, il te parle, il lui parle, il nous parle, il vous parle, il leur parle. Okay, so these examples are with one verb, okay? And then I've been rewrite, rewriting the same same um, sentence, but then at the near future, okay, with the two verbs. And then we can see how they go now. Il va me parler. He's going to talk to me. Il va me parler. So remember, you know, me before the second verb. Il va te parler. He's going to talk to you. Il va lui parler. He's going to talk to her or he's going to talk to him. Okay. Il va nous parler. He's going to talk to us. Il va vous parler. Is going to talk to you. Il va leur parler. Is going to talk to them. Okay. Il va me parler. Il va te parler. Il va lui parler. Il va nous parler. Il va vous parler. Il va leur parler. Bonjour à tous. Hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 4, leçon M. And in this lesson, we'll see how to conjugate together le verbe vouloir. Vouloir means to want, and uh, it belongs to the third group of verbs in French, so irregular. So that's the reason why I think it's quite good to see the conjugation at the present form together. So here it goes. Vouloir, first person, je veux. Final X, not pronounced. Je veux. Tu veux. Final X not pronounced, the same form. Il veut. Final T not pronounced. Elle veut. Okay, so here, so far we've got one phonetical form, it's the. Then for nous, classic ending, O N S, don't pronounce the S, just pronounce the ON. Nous voulons. Nous voulons. Same thing here, classic ending, E Z for vous. But then you pronounce it E. Vous voulez. Vous voulez. Vous voulez. And the last one. Here, E, U, E. And then E, N, T, classic ending. But then you don't pronounce it, so you get veulent. Veulent. Ils veulent. Elles veulent. Ils veulent. Elles veulent. Okay, so let's repeat it one more time. Je veux. Tu veux. Il veut, elle veut, nous voulons, vous voulez, ils veulent, elles veulent. So that's it for this lesson. It was a leçon M. Uh, well, you can find more lessons right here. Imagier is the name of the channel on YouTube. And then more material can be found there at imagier.net. Have a great day. Au revoir. Le verbe savoir. Savoir means to know and it's quite useful. And, uh, but then it is uh, irregular, so it belongs to the third group of verbs. So it's quite good to see the, the way to conjugate it together, okay, at the present form. And we'll see it right now. Okay, so let's start now. Je sais. Okay, final S not pronounced. And then you get this A-I-E. -E, okay, je sais. Sais. Okay. Tu sais. Same form. Final S not pronounced. Tu sais. Il sait. Final T not pronounced. Elle sait. So, one phonetical form so far. Nous 
savon. So classic ending for nous, O-N-S. You don't pronounce the final S. Nous savons. Nous savons. Okay? Then vous savez. Classic ending for vous, a Z, but then phonetically it's E. Vous savez. Savez. And then il. Here, classic ending for il and l at the plural form. E N T. You don't pronounce it, so you get the sound sav. V -v 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 -v. Sav. Okay? Il sav. Elle sav. So let's see that one more time. Je sais. Tu sais. Il sait. Elle sait. Nous savons. Vous savez. Ils savent. Elles savent. Il y a, so we saw it in a previous lesson quite shortly. So il y a means there is or there are. But then in French we will have only one form il y a. Okay? So let's see, for instance, here a question. Est-ce qu'il y a un magasin dans le quartier? Okay? Est-ce qu'il y a? So, is there un magasin, a shop, dans le quartier, in the neighborhood? Okay? Est-ce qu'il y a un magasin dans le quartier? All right. So the answer would be oui. Il est juste ici. Yes. It is right here. Oui, il est juste ici. Okay? So in that case, we've been using this il y a, there is. Okay? Just because un magasin, well, it's singular. Okay? So it's basically there is a shop, there is something. Okay? Let's see now. Here, same thing. Il y a une piscine, une piscine, a swimming pool, dans cette ville. Il y a une piscine dans cette ville? All right. So you can see that in the first example, I've been using this S que. You remember, we saw that previously, that you can add if you want to ask a question. Okay. Or then it's possible here just to keep the same order. There is, il y a, okay, une piscine, a swimming pool, dans cette ville, in this town. Okay. But then, don't forget to raise your voice at the end because it's a question. Il y a une piscine dans cette ville? Il y a une piscine dans cette ville? Okay, just a little bit to make it clear that it's a question. Okay, so answer, oui, elle est à côté de la mairie. À côté, remember, it was next or near. Okay, and then la mairie, city hall. Oui, elle est à côté de la mairie. All right, so in both cases here, il y a, just because it was masculin singulier, okay, and then here, il y a une piscine, féminin singulier, all right? And we'll see now the other option that we would have to ask correctly the question. So first, look at it. Il y a... Actually, you should change the order and put it like that. And the way you will pronounce it is y a-t-il? Y a-t-il? Okay, so that's the correct form to ask a question with il y a, so the formal form, if you want. And then, des toilettes, here it's the plural form, okay, toilets, okay. So, it doesn't really change because it will stay il y a, okay, but then here, of course, the order is changing, so that's the reason why it can be a bit tricky to, to notify the, the, the fact that basically it doesn't change even if it's plural here, okay. Dans ce restaurant, in this restaurant. Y a-t-il des toilettes dans ce restaurant? Y a-t-il des toilettes dans ce restaurant? Okay, and then the answer. Oui, elles sont juste à droite. Okay, droite, remember, it was on the right. À droite, on the right. Just on the right. Oui, elles sont juste à droite. Okay, so to re resume the whole thing, remember this il y a will be used so for there is, so like here, un magasin, a shop, so it's the singular form, okay, or then here as well, il y a, there is, 
une piscine, a swimming pool, but still it will be also used as like that, il y a, okay, or then in the other order here, for the plural form, okay, it doesn't change. So that's one interesting thing in French. For once, it's easy. It doesn't change. Il y a plus singulier or then il y a plus pluriel. Okay? We will discover together the passé composé form of the verb aller. Aller is to go. Okay? And remember that aller is uh, one of the tricky verbs in uh, the passé composé form because it will use être and not avoir as most of the verbs. Okay, so that's the reason why here you will have the form je suis allé. Okay, and then you can make the liaison here. Je suis allé. Je suis allé. Tu es allé. Tu es allé. Il est allé. Il est allé. You've got this little liaison between the two. Il est allé. Feminine form. Elle est allée. Okay, so have a look here. Remember, if you don't know that already, then I would advise you to check uh, the lesson uh, the, on uh, the passé composé that we did, we did uh, previously. Okay, so you've got to add this feminine mark at the end of your participe passé here, just because elle is feminine, and then you're using this être verb to construct the passé composé. That's the reason why. Phonetically, it doesn't exist. You don't pronounce it, so you get « elle est allée » and then for the masculine form, « il est allé ». So « allé » is pronounced the same way. But still, you have to write it. Okay? Same thing that if you get to put the, the plural form, then you will have to add this « s » mark of the plural at the end of your participe passé form here. Okay? « Nous sommes allés » You don't pronounce it. Okay, but you write it. Nous sommes allés. Vous êtes allés. Vous êtes allés. Same thing here. You put it, but you don't pronounce it. And then here, masculine form. Ils sont allés. So masculine plural. You put this S. Ils sont allés. Little liaison between the two. Ils sont allés. Elles sont allées. Feminine and plural here. Okay, uh, S, you don't pronounce them, but still, you've got to write them. And then this little liaison here. Elles sont allées. Okay, so let me repeat the whole thing for you. Je suis allé. Tu es allé. Il est allé. Elle est allée. Nous sommes allés. Vous êtes allés. Ils sont allés. Elles sont allées. The passé composé form of the verb parler. Parler is to speak or to talk. Okay, so let's discover it right now. First person, j'ai parlé. Tu as parlé. Il a parlé. Elle a parlé. Nous avons parlé. Vous avez parlé. Ils ont parlé. Elles ont parlé. All right. So remember, passé composé, you've got to use two parts. The first one, avoir in that case, and then what we call participe passé. This participe passé form, as you can see, doesn't change for all the persons. You will have to put avoir at the present tense here. Okay. J'ai parlé. Tu as parlé. Il a parlé. Feminine form, elle a parlé. Nous avons parlé, little liaison here, nous avons parlé, vous avez parlé, same thing here, little liaison, ils ont parlé, same thing here, ils ont, elles ont parlé. Okay, okay so we'll just see one more time uh, the passé composé form of finir, finir is to finish or to end, okay, and let's see how it goes. J'ai fini, j'ai fini. Fini. Tu as fini. Tu as fini. Il a fini. Feminine form. Elle a 
fini. Nous avons fini. Nous avons fini. Vous avez fini. Vous avez fini. Ils ont fini. Elles ont fini. Ok, so let's see them one more time. Remember, as we saw previously, you've got avoir here and then you've got fini. So this participe passé form, the second form that you've got to add to construct the passé composé. And fini doesn't change. It's here all the time and it's written the same way. Ok, j'ai fini. Tu as fini. Il a fini. Elle a fini. Nous avons fini. Vous avez fini. Ils ont fini. Elles ont fini. Les unités de mesure. Ok, so let's start. Un millimètre. Les millimètres. Un centimètre. Les centimètres. Un mètre. Les mètres. Un kilomètre. Les kilomètres. Un mètre carré. Les mètres carrés. Un litre. Les litres. Un gramme. Les grammes. Un kilo. Un kilogramme. Les kilos. Les kilogrammes. Les faux amis, so they look the same in English and in French, but then the meaning is different. Okay, so let's start now. And then the first one, it will be travailler. Travailler, okay, remember when you get this E and then double L like that and a vowel. Y, travailler, okay, travailler, and it means to work, okay. Sympathique, remember the H. H is not pronounced. Sympathique. Okay, and it means friendly, nice. Then, rester. Rester. Regular verb from the first group, easy to conjugate. Rester. Okay, and it means to stay, to remain. Then, la monnaie. Monnaie. Okay, final, uh, not pronounced. La monnaie. Okay, and it means small change. Le magasin. Le magasin. Okay, remember, you've got only one S between two vowels. Then you get the sound Z, all right? And then the ending here is I-N, so it's nasal, it goes in your nose, and it's un. Magasin. Okay? And it's shop. All right? Then, la librairie. Okay, remember, I here, li. Brairie, final E, uh, not pronounced. La librairie, okay, and it's a bookshop. Then, la journée, la journée, final E, uh, not pronounced, and it's day. Grand, final D, not pronounced, okay, G-R, gr, 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 and then the nasal, en, grand, okay, and it means big or tall. Then, gentil. So remember, this final L is not pronounced. Gentil. Gentil. And it's nice or kind. Then, attendre. Attendre. Remember, final E, uh, you don't insist on it. It just gives you the possibility to pronounce the dr, dr. Okay, so, attendre. Attendre. All right, and it's to wait. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 5, Leçon N. And in this lesson, we'll discover vocabulary regarding le corps humain. Le corps humain. So let's start now. 
la tête, la tête, l'épaule, l'épaule. Okay, so in that case, I did put this F here just to indicate you that it's feminine. Okay, because you cannot see it here with the, the, the article L. Okay, l'épaule. La poitrine. La poitrine. Le tronc. Le tronc. Okay, remember, final C is not pronounced here. Le tronc. Okay. L'estomac. L'estomac, okay, same thing here, final C, not pronounced, and then M means that this word, estomac, is masculine, okay, l'estomac. La hanche, la hanche, remember, H here is not pronounced, so you get the sound en, hanche at the beginning. Le poignet. Le poignet. So this combination of ET at the end will basically open the sound. So you get E, E, poignet. Okay, remember, G, N, 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 poignet, le poignet. La cuisse. La cuisse. Double S and then two vowels before and after. It will give you a really strong S sound. Okay? Cuisse, cuisse, la cuisse. Le genou, le genou. La jambe, la jambe. Ok, remember, A, M, when you combine these two, basically it's just like A, N, so it's nasal and it's en. Ok, so you get la jambe. La jambe. Cheville, la cheville. Remember, double L like that after I, Y, Y. Cheville. Le pied, le pied. Le dos, le dos. Final S not pronounced, okay? Le dos. Le cou, le cou. Le bras, le bras, same thing here, final S not pronounced, le bras. Le coude, le coude. So it's actually quite funny because the only difference between these two is this D, D at the end. Okay, so here in this one you've got le cou, okay, and then the second one here is le coude. Okay, remember, you don't insist on this final E, uh, it only gives you the sound of D at the end. Le coude, okay. Le nombril, le nombril. Le doigt de pied, le doigt de pied. La main, la main. So this combination, A, I, N, it's quite interesting because it will give you the sound un. So it's really a nasal, it goes in your nose, okay? And it's un. Main. La main. Le doigt. Le doigt. Okay, so don't be frightened by this G because basically you don't pronounce it and then the final T you don't pronounce it. So the only thing you get to pronounce is this combination of three word or letters, sorry, here. D, O, E. Okay, O, E, it's wa and then D, doua, that's the only thing, doua, le doua, okay. Le pouce, le pouce, l'ongle, l'ongle, okay, I forgot to write it, but it's masculine, okay, l'ongle. La peau, la peau. Okay, remember this combination of three vowels. Well, it's quite rare in French, but then, well, well, you can see it's, but then, so the sound that you will have to pronounce when you've got the, these three vowels combined together, it's the sound O. Okay, so really simple, O. Okay, so you get la peau. Okay, la peau. 
that's it. If you want more, then the address is here youtube.com slash imagier and then the website is here if you want to see more material or then write me a beautiful letter or a mail okay have a great day bye bye le visage the face so we just saw the human body previously and so we'll continue with le visage if that's okay with you let's hope so so let's start now les sourcils les sourcils okay so it's quite strange because you get this l s at the end but then well you don't pronounce them les sourcils l'oeil l'oeil strange combination of vowels here okay and then you will get the sound e and then y oeil all right and it's masculine by the way un oeil, l'oeil. Ok. Plural form, les yeux. Ok, so that's the tricky thing when you compare the, the, the singular form and the plural form. Ok, so l'oeil, singular, and then the plural, les yeux. Ok, you make this liaison between the two. Les yeux. Ok, final X not pronounced. Les yeux. Les cils. Les cils. Final S not pronounced. Les cils. La joue. La joue. Final E not pronounced here. La joue. La gorge. La gorge. Okay, remember when you get this combination G and O, you get the sound Go, go, okay? So, gore, gorge. And then, G and E gives J. La gorge, la gorge. Le front, final T not pronounced. Le front, okay? Remember this nasal, O-N, on, on, on. Le front. Le menton. Okay, same thing here. So you get two nasal, the first one here, en, and then the second one here, on, le menton. L'oreille. Remember, when you get this I, L, L, and then a vowel, it's I, I. L'oreille. All right? And it's feminine, by the way. Une oreille, l'oreille. Le nez. So remember when you get this combination, a Z here at the end of a word, it's E. Le nez. Le nez. La bouche. So remember, C, H combined together will give you this sh, sh sound. La bouche. Okay? La lèvre, remember, accent grave here, e, e, really open, la lèvre, la lèvre. La bouche, again, I don't know why, don't ask me, <laughs> I was tired when I made this one, so la bouche, one more time. La langue, remember when we've got this G and then U and then E, we get the sound G, G. Because when you combine this G and then E, remember it was the sound J, okay? So you get to put this U between the two to get the sound G, G. So you get la langue, langue, okay? La dent, final T not pronounced, la dent. Les cordes vocales. Les cordes vocales. So you can notice that, as usual in French, you've got this mark of the plural at the end, S, and then S here as well, but you don't pronounce them, okay? Les cordes vocales. Indicateur de temps. So if you want to introduce some uh, sentences or concepts at the past, present, or future tenses, 
then you will have to use them. So let's start now with the past, le passé, okay? And then the first one is hier. Hier means yesterday, okay? Hier. So remember, this H here is not pronounced, okay? So hier. Then la semaine dernière, okay? So it's last week, okay? But then if you look carefully, we've got la semaine, so semaine means week, okay? And then dernière is coming after, okay? So la semaine dernière. And in that case, if you look carefully as well, you get dernière, so it's the feminine form, because la semaine, la, is a feminine word. Okay, so la semaine dernière, last week. And then we get this autrefois, so it could be translated like in olden days or in olden times, okay? Autrefois, so A-U, autrefois, final S not pronounced, okay? Autrefois. Then for the present now, we've got aujourd'hui, means today, okay? So don't be afraid by this word because it looks a bit scary if you look at it like that, but uh, take the time to, well, divide it. So the first one, a u o jour, and then dui, okay? Ash is not pronounced, so you only get this dui thing. O, jour, dui, aujourd'hui, and it means today, okay? Then, cette semaine, okay, so we've got here what we call an adjective démonstratif, okay, this, set, okay, and it's at, at the feminine form, set, and then semaine, week, this week, cette semaine, all right, and then maintenant, okay, normally we tend not to pronounce this, uh, okay, so we get this maintenant, maintenant, okay, now, for the future now, we've got demain, and it means tomorrow. Demain, remember, when you combine this A-I-N, you get the sound un. Demain, demain. Okay? Then, la semaine prochaine. So it's next week. Okay? And as we had for the past tense here, we had la semaine dernière. Okay? So last week and dernier was coming after semaine, exactly the same concept, so you will have to put prochaine, so it's the feminine form here, after la semaine, okay? So next week, la semaine prochaine. Mm -hmm. And then bientôt, okay? Remember you put this accent circonflexe but you don't write it, oh, you, sorry, you write it but you don't pronounce it, and then the final T is not pronounced. Bientôt, okay, and then you could translate this bientôt as soon, okay, so something that will happen in the future, all right? So let's see them one more time. First one, hier, second one, la semaine dernière, then autrefois, aujourd'hui, cette semaine, maintenant, or then maintenant, okay, demain, la semaine prochaine, and then bientôt. L'expression de la quantité. So it's quite important, so I would like you to take a few minutes to watch carefully this video. And we'll start right now. L'expression de la quantité. So the first thing that we'll discover together, it's plusieurs. So plusieurs means several, okay? And so the way you will have to construct it is that after that, you will have to add a, a nom, a noun, okay? But then keep in mind that it should be at the plural form, okay? So several, and then followed by a noun at the plural form. So let's see a few examples now. J'ai invité plusieurs amis. J'ai invité plusieurs amis, okay? So remember, j'ai invité, so it's the past form, uh, of invité, to invite, okay, plusieurs, and then amis, friends, okay, j'ai invité plusieurs amis. Second example, il y a, il y a, there is, plusieurs enfants, kids, dans le jardin, in the garden, il y a plusieurs enfants dans le jardin, okay, and then, elle a fait plusieurs gâteaux, 
So, faire here at the passé composé form, plusieurs, faire, sorry, it means to, to do, okay, plusieurs gâteaux, cake, okay. So, what you can see here is that ami here is with S, so it's the plural form, okay. Here, right after plusieurs, you've got enfant with S at the plural form, and then here you've got that gâteau with X, so it's the plural form, all right. So, let's see now the second one. Uh, quelques. You don't pronounce the final S here. Quelque means few. Okay. And same thing as we had previously. You will have to add a noun at the plural form. Okay. So let's see the first example. J'ai rencontré. Rencontré is to meet. So it's the past form. J'ai rencontré quelques collègues. Colleague. J'ai rencontré quelques collègues. Okay. Second example. Nous avons... So it's avoir, to have, at the present form. Quelques petits problèmes, petits, small, problème, problem, avec lui, with him. Nous avons quelques petits problèmes avec lui. Okay, and then the last example. Elle a mangé quelques bonbons. Oh, oh we get two dots here, I don't know why, but only one is enough. Elle a mangé quelques bonbons. Okay, so manger here is to eat, past form, and then bonbon, candies. So same thing here, if you look carefully, you've got collègue with S, so plural form. Okay, here it's quite interesting because we've got this adjective petit, small, little, but then it's still at the plural form with S and problème at the plural form as well. Okay, and then bonbon here at the plural form with S as well. Okay, so now... Other possibility would be ne, and then aucun masculine form, or aucune feminine form. So no, or not any, okay? And after that, you will have to put a name, or a noun, sorry, at the singular form, okay? So ne, aucun, ne, aucune, plus a noun at the singular form, all right? So let's see the first example. Elle ne veut aucun Conseil. Okay, so you can see here that it's elle ne veut, so she doesn't want, okay, uh, vouloir is to want, aucun, so not any, no, and then conseil, it's advice, okay, so elle ne veut aucun conseil. Other example, je n'ai eu aucun problème. Okay, so here, EU, so it's the verb to have at the passé composé form. Okay, je n'ai eu aucun problème. Problème, problem. So I didn't have any problem. Il ne fait aucune erreur. Il ne fait, faire is to do, and it's the present form. Aucune erreur. Error is mistake. All right. So if you look carefully here, you get ne and then aucun. Okay. So it's at the masculine form because conseil is a masculine word. Here it's quite interesting because, as usual in French, when we've got this ne and then we've got a vowel after, so it can be quite tricky. So in most of the cases, this e will disappear. Okay, so you take it away, but then still, aucun is coming here, all right, and then it's at the masculine form because problème is a masculine word, all right. And then the last example, well, you've got the first part, ne, okay, not modified because faire starts with F, so no problem. But then it, here you've got this aucune, okay, aucune, so because uh, erreur is a feminine word, so you will have to put this Aucune. All right. So let's proceed now. Un peu or peu. And it means a few or few. Okay. So we'll be constructed with la préposition de. So you will have to put this de after. And then you will have to put the noun without the article. Okay. So if you want to construct this a sentence with a few or few, so remember, un peu or then peu, then don't forget to put this de, and the noun 
without the article. Okay? Then if you want to use this autant, it means as much. Same construction, you will have to put this de and the name or the noun, sorry, without the article. All right, so as much, we use this autant de and the noun without the article. All right. If you want to use moins, moins means less. Same thing here, you will have to use de after and the noun without the article. All right, so remember less in French it's moins de and the noun without the article. If you want to use plus, more, okay, in some cases you will have to pronounce it plus, okay, so you will see that a bit later, de and then the noun without the article. All right, remember more, plus, or then plus, de and the noun without the article. If you want to use beaucoup, beaucoup means a lot of. It, look, it looks a bit strange, huh? beaucoup, like that. Remember, you don't pronounce the final P, okay? And then you get this combination of vowels, E, A, U, and you get the sound O. So technically it's beaucoup, okay? So it's not difficult to produce orally. Beaucoup, a lot of, okay? Same construction, you will have to put the after, and then the noun without the article, okay? A lot of beaucoup de and the noun without the article. If you want to use trop, and trop means too many, okay? Then you will have to put de and the noun without the article, okay? Remember, too many, trop, don't pronounce the final P, trop, de, and the noun without the article, all right? And then assez, assez means enough, okay? Assez, remember two vowels here, a uh, and then e, uh, and then double s, so it's really strong the s, assez, assez, okay? Assez, so same construction, de and the name, or the, sorry, the noun without the article, okay? So enough, assez, de and the noun without the article.